2017 celebrates the 100-year anniversary of Sacramento City College. The college is the oldest of our region's community colleges, and its story and growth mirrors that of the city for which it's named. Joining us to mark this important milestone is Sacramento City College Vice President of Student Services, Michael Poindexter, next on Studio Sacramento. At Five Star Bank, we create thoughtful solutions to help the capital region thrive, from economic development and education to public health and safety, issues that are vitally important to Sacramento's prosperity. We're proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. Michael, as Sacramento City College approaches its 100th anniversary, what's the most surprising thing that you and your colleagues have learned about your institution? We've learned that we can be a great institution and supply a need to our community to educate the citizens of Sacramento City College, to have them go on to wonderful and great careers. Uh, it's a starting point. Uh, and we realize that it's a needed opportunity for many of our, our citizens who may not have thought that they could go to college, attend a college, and be successful in college. So we're, we, we've been opening doors and making sure that students are able to walk through those doors. And those doors have been open for so many people yes. in, in this region and beyond. And one of the things that I'm told is that there are a number of very eminent personalities that have been students or have graduated from Sac City. Yes, you're exactly right. We just about, you can find probably everyone in the city of Sacramento that will have a friend, a family member, an employer, an employee that have actually walked through the doors of Sacramento City College. Um, and so through that and by offering those, that type of opportunity to so many different people, they're bound to be prestigious people within our community that have uh, attended Sacramento City College, such as actors, actresses, judges, uh, the Chief Justice. The Chief Justice. Yes. Of? Of California. Of the California Supreme Court. Is from Sacramento City College. Wow. Wow. Yes. And you say actors and actresses, too. Anybody, anyone whose name? Did I'm you see The Help? Yes. Uh, Jessica Chastain is one of our students. Really? From Sacramento City College. Yes. Yes. Now, the one that I had heard about was uh -huh. the very famous writer Joan Didion. Yes. And I don't know whether she was a student or a faculty member. Uh, you know, that name, I've heard that name floating around, but I can't remember if she was a student or a faculty member. But, um, but even with faculty members and faculty members that have been students, uh, the condos, you know, the famous artists. Oh, the, yeah, the yeah. artist family. Yes. Sacramento City College, you know, and the list just goes on and on of different people that have got, walked through those doors. And we're creating new uh, uh, representatives of our community that will be uh, known throughout California and out throughout the United States. How did Sacramento City College get its start? We got our start by, um, I think, the city understanding that they needed a a new or a close to home type of higher education institution. And we started with uh, Sacramento High School and we actually were a part of the Sacramento High School. Sacramento City College was a part of Sacramento High School? Sacramento High School, that's how we got our start, yes, yes. And we had a wonderful president and she wasn't president at that time, they called her Dean, uh, which is Belle Coolidge, who was the first, uh, 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 I, I would get you to say the first president of, of the college, but she was called Dean. We call her our president. So Bell uh, Bell Coolidge, mm -hmm. she was also Sacramento's first female mayor. She was also the mayor. So another prestigious person that uh, walked through the doors of Sacramento City College. And uh, she actually lifted the college up to begin a educational institution in the city of Sacramento. Um, we separated from uh, Sac High and actually became a community college district uh, after uh, leaving uh, Sac High. And then we joined Sac City Unified, and then we separated from Sac City Unified to become the Los Rios District and with four community colleges under it. And 
And Sacramento City College is not just the main campus on Freeport Boulevard. We have two other locations, one in West Sac, which is across the street from City Hall, and we have uh, our Davis Center, which is located on the University of California Davis campus. So we actually have a campus on another campus. Really? How, does that, how does that work? Why, why, why that type of location integrated into UC Davis? Well, first of all, it's about friends. <laughs> and it's about uh, uh, having the right location for people to move from one institution into the other institution, too. And it was about a need, too. The city of Davis needed a college that was in their backyard. So we began to have those conversations and found that, and Davis decided that uh, we could be located on their campus. So we have many of our students taking uh, classes both at uh, the Sacramento City College Davis campus and also the University of California Davis campus. That's really interesting. And, and over the recent years, there has been more of a push to integrate um, the, the, the sort of educational path between community college and uh, you know, higher, other higher education institutions. How's that working for you all? Well, it, it's working very, very well. I mean, one of the things that we know, we need to start working with K through 12. We also need to make sure there's a good connection between K through 12 and the community college. And we know that we need to have that rela a good relationship with the university that students could transfer into. Uh, the relationship is going very, very well. Um, we have uh, a lot of programs that we work on together. Our faculty, the faculty are meeting to have those conversations to show where the gaps are. And that's between K-12 all the way th through the university. And not only with UC Davis, but also with Sac State too. Uh, where our faculty are meeting, where we're looking at where are the gaps uh, why, uh, to identify why students aren't prepared to come into our colleges and universities. And we're trying to fill those gaps uh, by making sure that the right people are working with each other. Has the mission of the community college, of Sac City College in particular, changed since its founding to today? Well, the community college has been expanding ever since 100 years ago. And you find it changing uh, with the mood and with the need of the nation. And so yes, you're, you're seeing things change. You're seeing that we need to make sure we're listening to our, our to, 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 the, to the nation really of the need of the institution where you're finding that many of the jobs for the future will require an associate's degree. Um, but of course, a bachelor's degree is always better uh, because uh, the more education you have, the more abilities that you have to meet the need of whatever it is that you're doing. But uh, many of the jobs that are out there right now will require an associate's degree, which means expanding and, and us increasing our enrollment in uh, the community colleges. When, when you look at the population mm -hmm. that you're serving today, yes. what are the needs that are the most intense that might surprise okay. the folks that are, are watching us today? Okay. Well, first of all, let me just talk about the population that we have. We will have valedictorians all the way to students who are underprepared to come into our institutions. You'll have lawyers and doctors coming back to, to either find a different career or to get additional educational um, uh, uh, development in different types of areas. With that said, um, some of the things that would surprise uh, many people, especially in colleges, and this happens in colleges and universities throughout the United States, uh, you'll find that our students arrive on our campus hungry. Hungry? Yes, uh, where they have not eaten. Um, you'll even find it in our nursing program, of all places. Really? Where students uh, are in need of food. Um, you'll also find that uh, our books, the cost of books are very, very different than several years ago. A book can cost up to $500. Okay, so now you've hit a sensitive spot mm -hmm. as yeah. a father with two kids in college. Yeah. <laughs> can you help me understand the economics of how a book, a single book, can be, you know, more costly than, yeah. you know, maybe an entire class? Yeah. Well, I can't help you in understanding it <laughs> because we're still trying to understand okay, that, it. Now I'm really concerned. Yeah, uh, but what we are finding, it's the publishers. It's not the colleges and the universities. It is the publishers that are putting this cost on the books. And, um, and some of the 
information that we've found in some of the books that sometimes the audio file is being changed or maybe a page may be changed or a chapter may be changed in the book, but that's it. And, and they won't resell that previous book that was sold at a different price, um, but they only bring in the newer book and the students have to pay that $500 again. You know, it raises a question. Mm -hmm. the, we have so many conversations mm -hmm. in our state right. about the cost of tuition, right. the cost of tuition, and it's what many of us focus on like a laser beam. Mm -hmm. But what you're really saying is there's this whole other piece which right. we kind of know but we don't focus on, which right. is the cost of materials as well, which exactly. it sounds like it's almost as big as a crisis for some people as tuition is. It, it, it is, um, it, it, and, and many students, if they don't know the resources on the colleges, will go probably go without that book. But we do have resources on campus that can help students with their books. And I think we're exploring, not that I think we're exploring, we are exploring other options for students besides buying that $500 book. And uh, that's working too. Uh, but it, it's our publishers and, um, and of course, the need is there, and the students need the books, as always. Well, we may come back to that on a separate show. Yeah. But uh, share with us, uh, what are you all doing to mark this 100-year milestone? Well, one of the things that we're doing is, is a fundraising campaign uh, to address the issues that I just talked about, the, uh, the hunger in, in, the, uh, in, in our colleges, the book need in our colleges. Also, housing is, is, is of importance. We have many students that are homeless that are on our college campuses. And notice I keep saying college and university campuses. Uh, they're homeless. homeless. Yes, yes, on our college campuses. Uh, we're also addressing faculty need too, where, uh, where we are looking at faculty to be more creative and innovative in how students learn and, and how they teach on the college what campus. What does that mean? That means uh, if there's a new way for students to understand the information that's being taught, we're looking for that, 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 that possibility of putting that process in our, in, in our educational system at the, at the institution. We have some very, very creative faculty at our, at our colleges and universities across the country. And, um, and it takes money to do some of those types of things that they want to do. Uh, the creativity and, and uh, maybe even writing the book or changing the curriculum um, takes a lot of money. In, in that process. So we want to provide funding for our faculty to have those opportunities too. Um, when you look at some of your more wealthier institutions, there's always endowments and, and, and financial resources avail available for our faculty to do that type of work. We don't have as much of that in our community colleges. Isn't it interesting that we don't typically associate having an endowment mm -hmm. with community colleges, yeah. yet community colleges educate more students than yeah. some of those other four-year universities that, that do have the privilege of having. Yes, um, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I think our community colleges are, um, you find more students entering into the community colleges than in our four-year institutions. Uh, this is the entry into the four-year institution. So students are able to get their associates or follow a, a, a degree process or a uh, relationship that we have with the four-year institutions and be able to walk right into the four-year colleges. And I should share with you that um, when you find a community college student in our universities, they're doing better or just as well as a student that originally started, that started in the four-year institution. Well, I had a young man who graduated from a local high school a couple uh -huh. of years ago, Christian Brothers, he uh -huh. went to. And he got accepted to multiple four-year right. institutions. Right. Um, and he chose to go to Sac City College right. for two years and get his associate degree. And I asked him, why, why are you doing that? Why didn't you just go straight through? Uh -huh. And he said, because it was more efficient. Right. It was lower cost. Right. I'm more likely to get my classes. Right. And I'm going to end up with the same name on the four-year degree. They don't stamp community college yeah. two years underneath it. And I thought that, you know, for such a young person, you know, barely turning 18, mm -hmm. that was a, an extremely wise and rational 
kind of analysis? Well, we have a lot of those students at our institutions, uh, no matter if you're coming from a Christian Brothers or if you're coming from uh, one of our local feeder schools that surround the Sacramento City College. Um, they're all coming to, to the institution. And uh, it is efficient and financially uh, uh, better for a student to go through the community college, mainly because the, the expense is much, much lower. And uh, you can receive that degree and it's the same psychology course, the same sociology course, the same business course that you would be taking at the As university. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I was recently told, maybe you can tell me the, the truth mm -hmm. of this, is that um, while a lot of people perceive that community college is far more expensive than it was you know, when the pyramids were being built when I went to uh -huh. community college right. and it was free, that there are a number of different programs and waivers where for a significant number of students who have the need that community college is fairly low cost or at no cost at all. Right. Um, there should not be, finan financing your college education should not be a reason why you don't come to college. Not the tuition part. The books, another the show. The books, the books. No, another show, different time. But, exactly. But please but, continue. But we also have help for the books too. And especially that's one of the reasons I'm, we're doing the campaign, uh, the, uh, the funding campaign. But um, that shouldn't be a reason because we have uh, a Board of Governors uh, waiver that students can apply for and their fees are paid. Uh, and most students that attend the community college are eligible for that uh, BOG waiver. Most? Most students, yes. Now do all students apply? No. but. Uh, it's there for them if they would like to apply. So we do a, a lot of um, public relations on our BOG waiver to make sure they, students know that they're eligible for it, they can apply for it, and their fees will be waived. What do you think is the role, 100 years mm -hmm. from the birth of Sacramento City College, right. its role in the Sacramento community? I think our role is, number one, to introduce education to populations that have not utilized the system before. Uh, currently, uh, before the recession, we were headed toward 30,000 students. We are currently at about 23,000 students at this time period. So we have plenty of seats available for students if they're interested. Has not recovered yet, that's surprising. Not recovered yet, and uh, for reasons, there are some students that are working, or prospective students that are working out there, but not in jobs that we possibly could offer. We actually have programs in the community college that after a semester, a couple of semesters, Without, we want people to, to receive their certificate and their degree, but without receiving their certificate and degree can make up to $60,000. That's news. <laughs> That's news. And um, it, it is news, um, sixty to $70,000 just by uh, one or two, sem by two semesters or, or, or at least two years in, in the institution. A lot of the employers are coming after our students after their first year. Wow. Yeah. Well, that, that really flies in the face of the notion that a number of people have, which yeah. is that community college's primary mission is remedial education. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, for folks who didn't do so well in K through 12 right. and whose skills are not polished up enough for a four-year, um, that's the sole function of the community college. You're telling a very different story. It, well, it's a very, very different story, and it's bigger than uh, the community college. We are seeing a more and more underprepared student entering into our colleges and universities throughout the United States. You can look at your Harvard, your Yales, your Davis, your Berkeleys, uh, your Sac State, um, to Michigan, you name it. We're seeing a more and more underprepared student, and we're trying to help them get up to snuff so they can graduate from our institutions. But the community college is not just a remedial uh, educational type of program. We offer uh, developmental education programs uh, in our community colleges to get students up to snuff, but um, they're being prepared to take those uh, psychology courses, the uh, career and technical courses, uh, the uh, transferable coursework, uh, so they can move on to have good careers throughout their life, change their lives. Mm -hmm. and, and in addition to the associate's degree, mm -hmm. which 
uh, is sort of the degree focus mm -hmm. for community colleges. Right. Do you all still do certificated programs as well? I know at one point you all taught people air conditioning and things like that and heating, you know, different types of things. Those are some of the $60,000 jobs. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Those are some of the $60,000 jobs. And yes, we still do career and technical uh, vocational programs in the community college. Uh, again, uh, there has to be training uh, for uh, uh, employers to hire people to do HVAC. Uh, there has to be training for in railroad and we're offering all of those opportunities to folks who are interested in those programs but they are the high paying jobs that are out there. Which programs do you wish that people knew more about like that where these jobs or these opportunities for training and the jobs that follow them go begging? Uh, many of our health careers program, uh, health career programs, um, uh, 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 air conditioning programs, uh, railroad, um, uh, uh, aerospace. Aerospace? Well, and I shouldn't say aerospace, uh, it's our, uh, where we train students to be traffic controllers. Okay. So you mean like an airport in the tower? In the airport in the towers, yes. We're training those Really? Students. Yes. Do they go out to SAC International or Executive and do like OJT stuff or is it all in the classroom? How does that work? We have simulation and everything right there on campus, just like if they were being trained at an airport. Huh. Who'd yeah. have known? Yeah. Who'd yeah. have known? Now, along with the college itself, mm -hmm. you have next to it the stadium. Right. And you know, you all, your campus has expanded over the years. Right. Did Sac City College build that stadium, or how, how did that relationship come into being? Well, you know, everything that happens on our college campus is basically funded by the state. Um, we're not, you won't find uh, the community college like the universities where they're fundraising to build buildings or they have donors that uh, will um, donate the money to them. Uh, ours is coming from um, the state. Should and, that change? Well, I think it should change. Um, I, I, I think uh, also what should change is people who are financially able to give money to the community college to build buildings. Uh, I think it should happen. Yes, I think it should change. Well, it, with such a distinguished alumni, it would uh -huh. seem like you have a target-rich environment for you and your colleagues to pursue. We are working on that at this very moment of doing, becoming more like our universities where we're actually following the students that graduate from our institutions and identifying who those folks are that can uh, donate and give back to our institution. How do the employers find you all? So you're, you're growing all of this talent right. within the region. How do the employers, not just you know, the very large employers, but mm -hmm. the mid-sized and smaller ones, how do they find you and find the talent you're turning out? Well, we have advisory uh, groups that are on our campuses that, are, that is attached to each one of those programs that I talk with you about. So we're actually out in, in the, uh, in the communities where uh, we have the mid-sized employers and, and the large employers, and we're bringing them to campus to help us understand the need of their operations. So we're looking for them, bringing them in. They also are finding us and telling us what their needs are. And of course, as we find them, we want them sitting at the table too. It would seem like you all would have to be extremely nimble mm -hmm. in those relationships because, you know, markets in, in business, commerce, mm -hmm are changing so rapidly, you right. know, every second there's a new innovation or a right. new disruption in a business or something like that. Right. And I know it takes time in order to build courses and programs, so that coordination has, to, I would assume, has to be extremely tight between you all. It, it, it is, and um, we also have to look at what are our priorities for the institution and how do those outside forces um, um, become a collaborative opportunity for the institution. So it, it is tight, but at the same time, we have to look at what's happening in the world, what's happening in the nation, and sometimes make some decisions that um, need to be done at the moment. For example, Makerspace, you probably have heard about that. 
Um, everybody's having a maker space right now. And if you don't have a maker space, you're kind of being left out. And it's where people are coming together to build and develop and to share knowledge. And um, that's one of those new things that we're looking at at our institution, uh, actually having a maker space on the college campus. So you have to be nimble, but at the same time, you have to be ready to address some of the current issues that are happening in the city and in the state. Sounds like the next 100 years are going to be as exciting as the last 100. They're going to be exciting, and we still have a lot of things to do, car shows, 100 years of car shows. And we're going to leave it there. Okay. All right. <laughs> and that's our show. Thanks to our guests, and thanks to you for tuning in to Studio Sacramento. I'm Scott Syfax. See you next time right here on KVIE. Five Star Bank, we create thoughtful solutions to help the capital region thrive, from economic development and education to public health and safety, issues that are vitally important to Sacramento's prosperity. We're proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. All episodes of Studio Sacramento, along with other KVIE programs, are available to watch online at kvie.org video.